Y'all don't know who the fuck to trust. This is my friend or my father. Guys, we are behind the wheel of the 2021 Honda Civic Type R Mark 10. It's about to be fun. Yeah, Matt's having a blast already. I've been wanting to drive this car for a long time, since the 2020 refresh. So, uh, some of you guys will notice that our production is a little bit different today. We're actually at a Mama Drive event. Uh, so, the higher production value that you're used to seeing on the channel is going to be a little bit lower today because we're focused on getting as many cars reviewed and tested as we can, rather than uh, giving you guys some nice goopy B-roll to look at. Oh! It's All right. fast! So let's start. <laughs> Two liter turbo, uh, 306 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque. Yes. We are in the six-speed manual. The exclusive option. You can only get it two liter, you can only get it turbocharged, and you can only get it with three pedals. Um, okay, yeah, so you mentioned that the suspension, it's reworked, right, for, well, no, it's... Yeah, so for 2020, they, I believe it was 2020, they went through kind of like a, a refresh, or like a mid-cycle refresh, it was probably what you would normally call it, uh, and they basically retuned a lot of the suspension, the geometries and everything, and they basically made the ride a lot more refined than it had been or er, previously because it was more like Focus RS in the past, where it was a little bit bumpier, over damped, it wasn't as quite as good to live with day to day, and now it, it fits into your life a lot better. Front wheel drive, as we mentioned, right, they have a limited, um, or limited slip differential in the front. Yeah, so you'll see it here. Shift the second mid corner. Um, the tip in and the turn, the turning inputs are just fantastic. I mean, the steering is, glorious and yeah this is the thing that uh, Honda gets a lot of credit for from journalists and I absolutely uh, see why and they say that they've perfected front wheel drive uh, because in something like this pushing out 306 horsepower 295 pound feet you can get torque steer very easily but none of that torque translates through the steering wheel I have I know exactly where my front wheels are the steering inputs feel great and it's just it just gets down really well through that limited slip the, the throttle response and the mapping is really dynamic. Uh, the Does it auto rev up. match for you? If in it will, but that's no fun. Um, but anyway, yeah, you want to talk about exterior. So this is my deal. This is my issue with the Type R. And you mentioned it. It looks it's, like a car that you find in the bottom of a cereal box. Yeah, the style. And <laughs> I've gotten oh, conflicting shout opinions. Shout out to your past two years. <laughs> I've gotten conflicting feedback uh, from basically the videos that I've done on this car, as well as the 11th gen. I personally think this one is overstyled. I think a lot of people feel that way, but a lot of people also really like this because it is kind of like a younger person style. But then again, when I make videos about this, I get people that are 40, 50 plus that say they own this and they love the styling. Yeah. So that's the thing. Styling is always subjective. Yeah, there's a lot of fake venting and a lot of that stuff going around. And of course it's a hatchback and you have a huge wing. Mm -hmm but it's very type R. Pretty soupy like. It's very type R. Yeah, I don't know. I, and type R like, I mean. It's not my personal taste, but I get it. I yeah. totally get it. I can see the appeal. I yes. can respect the appeal and I can respect the way it looks. I think the driving dynamics so much um, definitely make up and would, you know, I could. Oh, it's easy to heel toe. I could see right through the, no, the exterior. Nice. Headlights are okay. Yeah, uh, the grill's normal. a bit overdone. Wheels, we have BBS four. Is that one on this or only the limited? Yes. Okay, so, so this I is the BBS, BBS Force, Force wheels. wheels. Um, obviously, we're in a hatchback. Trail lights, or tail lights, you have the, the crab Yeah, you have the Mr. Kind of. Krabs, yeah. Pinchies. Uh, um, yeah, it's still a Civic at the end of the day, so a lot of the styling components are very Exhaust, very triple port, I, carbon. I like. Oh, so you're going to get beat by a Volvo. He just got gapped, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> got gapped hard by an XC40 left here. Um, yeah, so the triple port exhaust I think is pretty cool. It's very different. Uh, and then you've got that carbon diffuser back there. So that's that goes along with like a lot of the Let's body talk work. interior because I think we both said the exact same thing when we got in here and we said too much red. And you know what's even yeah. ironic about that? You put it in sports mode and you get sport. even more, sorry, sport, <laughs> sorry, sport mode. You get even more red ambient lighting around the dash yeah. when you do that. It's so just, it's overwhelmingly red for me. It's, a, it's, just, it's just a touch too much red in here for me yeah. as well. And I mean, I should be honest and personally, like red interior isn't generally my taste. It's not really my choice. I'm more of like a white interior kind of person, but like the seats are supremely comfortable. They're seats perfectly really comfortable. bucketed. 
they hug you just fantastically well. But yeah, like there's Alcan your, your steering wheel is Alcantara, it's red. Uh, there's red all through your vents, across your dash, in your gauge cluster. They have like red highlights, like ambient lighting in the dash. Really good um, headroom in here. We're both over six feet tall yeah. and we fit very comfortable. Yeah. Um, we can try and maybe Matt, you can jump in the back seat when we stop. And yeah, switch. I mean, that's the nice thing about this is it still is a Civic. So, like, if you're used to being in a Civic hatchback, that's what this is. And you have a Civic hatchback style rear seat. So, you get a lot of usability, a lot of comfort, and a lot of space. And you still have the hatchback <laughs> that has plenty of space. That's the nice thing about this car is it's an absolute joy behind the wheel. And then you also have all the usability and daily ability of a Civic. Technology, I mean, nothing to write home about. This is like, what, a five or six inch screen. It's just your basics, right? But I mean, that's the tech, being a, a, an advanced technology car is like not what this thing is intended to do, right? It it has what your your basic needs would be from this thing. It's got yeah, navigation, absolutely. it's got, um, obviously you, you can, can do Apple your CarPlay, phone, Android Apple Auto. CarPlay, Android Auto. It's wired, but that's, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, that's where the, this falls short, and that's where you start to wait for the 11th gen to get a little bit more updated, a little bit more refreshed, and yeah, the technology will come along, but yeah, that's the thing that really dates this whole experience. Oh my gosh. It's just fun, you know? It's just fun. Um, safety, I mean, I'm not... I think they got a pretty standard suite. Yeah, I mean, you get um, you get your reverse camera. It's pretty terrible, to be honest. But again, the technology is where this thing falls short. Uh, it's meant to be driven. And I know we're going to get a bunch of comments being like, well, why would you want safety equipment? Why would you want lane keep? You're supposed to drive the car. And like, yeah, I get it. But sometimes you are on the highway. And sometimes you yeah, do want route. a little bit like more relaxed. There is a comfort mode for a reason, you know? Yeah. So I say at this point, before we start to talk about any of like the competitors or the price or anything, let's get you behind the wheel and see what you think. Send it into the corner. Excellent grip. It is wet. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh! fun. It is really nice. I forgot how much I miss a manual car. I know. Yeah, so that's the thing. You don't get many of these uh, anymore, but let's talk about what you actually can get and what does compete against this thing. So. Um, well, let's start first off. Base price on something like this, uh, around 40K. You can get a limited edition uh, that saves 50 pounds. That's like only for 2021, and that'll be a little bit more expensive, and you'll get taken for a ride at the dealership. But basically with this car, uh, what you compete against is stuff like your WRX STI. That's due for a new generation, like in the next year or two. Uh, you've got your VW Golf R, which is brand new and just came out. Uh, and now, what I'm actually super excited about is you can get a Hyundai Kona N that competes against this thing. So we don't have pricing on a lot of those because, well, a lot of them are very, very new. So with those competitors, WRX, Kona N, Golf R, having, well, we haven't driven the new Golf R and that's supposedly redone a lot of the uh, driveline to make it feel more rear wheel drive. They've overdriven that rear axle. Um, Kona N I think will be front wheel drive as well and WRX will have a symmetrical all wheel drive. So we haven't driven a lot of those, but based on what we know about those, which one do you think you would have? I just think it's gonna be hard to top this front wheel drive system. I think, as you mentioned when we started this video, Honda has perfected it. Like this is the benchmark. This is front wheel drive, how it's supposed to be. Yes. 100%. Very little, if any, torque steel torque steer oh yeah. this guy's nice this is like no understeer so so yeah with all of those competitors in mind and with the front wheel drive thing in mind i think the the most interesting and compelling thing that we talked about uh before coming here to film this is that this car is faster around the nurburgring than an audi r8 v10 it is insane and v10. actually a bunch of other cars too but like that was the one that stuck out to us yeah that was a, i mean like that has more than double the engine size <laughs> So I think with all of that in mind, it's hard not to choose the Type R. And I think the thing that also bears mentioning is like, there's such an enthusiast following, the culture behind this, the JDM, you've got your Mugen tuners, like there's such a community behind this car and this brand that I'm so glad that they brought it to North America for this generation. I'm super excited for the 11th gen, and this is a fantastic car. I agree. I think, and I'm probably gonna be in the minority here, and. I hate to say it, but I just think like, I don't think, the driving dynamics are spectacular, but I think the thing that would turn me away potentially is just that 
it does look like it's geared more towards the younger generation. And I wish that if they just toned down the uh, the styling, the styling just a, just a tad, I would be a huge fan of it. You know what these, these? Well, but that's the thing. The new 11th gen is going to be a lot more subtle. Yeah, and that and I'm looking. You know what? These shifts are really short. I like that. Yeah, the short throw is really nice. Yeah. Overall, fantastic driving experience. Excellent car. We knew that coming into this. I'm really glad to see what they did with those revisions in 2020 to make it more dailyable. <laughs> and we're going to give this thing back to Honda. <laughs> Driven hard, put away wet. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time.